Want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for all of the continued support. And I am done. Okay, so I just got done reading Son of the Black Sword. This is book one of Saga of the Forgotten Warrior by Larry Correa. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was just right now. So <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, I love this book. I am going to be singing its praises for a long, long time, assuming that the series doesn't totally drop off a cliff, which I'm praying it doesn't do. Uh, but this, this is crazy. Um, I can't believe how good this book is and how lower my expectations were for this book. So this is, as you can tell, a very easy five out of five for me. Um, and it's just, it's really an incredible book. It's just got like everything that I love in fantasy in it. I mean, it's got these, you know, crazy intense action scenes, just wonderful characterizations of people who have to make, you know, horrific moral choices that make them have to grow. It's got amazing world building that just makes me sit back in awe and a plot that just doesn't let off the gas, even when exploring backstories, which is a traditionally very boring aspect of fantasy books. Um, I'm just in awe. I mean, so backing up a little bit. So this book um, is the winner of my Patreon raffle wheel. So on Patreon, uh, depending on the tier you're on, you get to put a book or two into this big raffle wheel. And at the end of the month, I spin it, and whatever gets picked, I have to read. Um, and even if I if I'm no, I'm gonna love it, or no, I'm gonna hate it. But most of the books on there are books I've never really ever heard of. Um, and this is one of them. And the cover looks truly atrocious. I mean, uh, just look at this thing. That, that, that does not inspire confidence in a uh, in a fantasy story. Uh, but almost as soon as I started reading it, I just fell in love with it, and I fell in love with the writing the main character. I mean, it felt as I was reading this, that it was, uh, this kind of witcher type character like Geralt. Um, but actually well-written and a character that actually has emotion, even though he, you know, lacks some emotions, but he actually has some, unlike Geralt who just has none, which is a rather boring character. Um, and this monster hunter, which is fun. Um, and, and I'm, and I'm reading this thing and I'm going, how is it possible that this book is so good? Like, what am I missing here that other people are picking up on? Um, or what am I picking on up on that other people aren't? And so I just, I don't often do this, but I had to just go research this question. I mean, this has happened to me before. Um, I'd say the most notable example of this happening was when I read um, the... Under the Northern Sky series by Leo Carew. I'm not done with it yet. I still have to read the last one, The Cuckoo. But when I read The Wolf, I went like, what am I missing here? How were people not read this? And, I, and I, when I did that, I wasn't able to find the answer. But on this one, um, I did find the answer. And there's this um, event that happened called Sad Puppies. And it was this, which is a silly title. But to summarize it all, uh, there's these Hugo Awards, which are like the biggest awards for fantasy and sci-fi. And there was this battle between people that were more, uh, I, I don't even, I can't even probably describe it really, but it was like white men versus more like progressive, all uh, more ethnically diverse, typically more women. And there was like these voting blocks set up on we're going to vote for our people, you're going to vote for your people. Um, and it created this huge bitter divide in the Hugos. And ever since then, the Hugos, in my opinion, have been totally tainted uh, because the awards are being selected based on, you know, politics and not like just the books themselves. There's more into it. And I, and I hate that. Um, but this guy was apparently the main guy that organized like the, the white guys together to vote in a voting block. And they, you know, kind of got tossed out of the of ever being considered for books in there again and like pariahs in, in the fantasy field. And my guess is this is why I've never heard of this book. This is why I've never heard of this author um, is there's like this campaign against him almost because it's gotta be right. Because this book is crazy good. And this book is a lot better than most other fantasy stories. Um, and I'm not saying that like compared to, you know, more ethnically diverse women, many of which have written incredible fantasy stories, but like compared to other white men, um, you know, this story stands out as, as incredible and, you know, not taking a stance on that issue at all. Cause a, I don't have enough info 
and more importantly, B, I don't care. Um, I've never cared uh, the political affiliation or political views, no matter how crazy they may be, um, of the authors that I read. You know, and I've gotten some flack for it before when I've read things like um, Jishin Liu's um, The Three Body Problem. It's a lot of people telling me uh, about this author's views on things, coming that he lives in China and his views on some really horrific things. Um, this guy, which I'm assuming I'm probably going to get some comments below being like, Matt, how could you review a book by this guy? Um, you know, and I just don't care. Uh, I want to read art <laughs> because it's good. I don't care about these other like prerequisites for what I can or cannot read. But my guess is that's why this book didn't explode. So that out of the way, let's talk about this book and what I loved about it so much. So first let's go over the plot a little bit. So Long before this book begins, there was like this huge war between man and demons. Um, the demons like came down. I'm figuring I'm probably going to get more of this backstory later, but they came down from heaven or the sky or whatever it may be. Um, and this hero arose, this, this, this human uh, who organized humanity and drove all the, all the demons out to sea. Now, since then, the humans rule the land and the demons rule the sea. And this has created some very interesting dynamics, uh, not like central to the story, but funny because living near the sea is like horrible. You don't want to live near it because this is where the demons live. This is where all the poor people live. Um, and, you know, even eating fish is like horrific. It'd be like the the most horrible thing that you could ever eat. Nobody would ever want to eat that, right? Because it comes from this demon sea, uh, which is funny because it's kind of the opposite. It's, it's true in, uh, in, the, in the way that we live. Like living by the sea is usually considered very nice and housing can be very expensive living by the sea and uh, seafood can be absolutely wonderful and expensive. Um, but since then, so the demons rule the water, um, and this also started the Age of Kings, which quickly fell apart because of human greed and selfishness um, and humans just fighting each other. And instead of having this these kingdoms, um, the law was was established. And, and I don't mean the law in the way that we kind of think of the law. It's like, oh, here's a common set of laws that we must follow. It's like a a moral code, and you must follow it punished by death. And there are these people out there, these, they're called the protectors, and they enforce the law. Um, and they are, you know, judge, jury, and executioner. They also are the ones that are able to keep the demons out at sea. So if a demon kind of comes on shore, they'll call one of these protectors out. They'll come out and try to put him down um, after tons of people have died because nobody can stop a demon except for these protectors. And even then, it can be very difficult for the protectors to get them. Um, now... Insert here, fast forward um, to modern day, and you have this guy, Ashok. I think it's Ashok or Ashok, A-S-H-O-K. I don't know. I didn't do the audiobook. Um, but he's been chosen by this magical sword, which gives him the experience uh, and most of the memories of all of its former wielders. So, like, tons and tons and tons of people. And it makes him, like, the most master swordsman there is. Um, these swords used to be more popular, but it, it's – I love this aspect of the story and this world building here. Um, but – the swords will choose their owners. So when somebody dies that owns one of these swords, um, there will be this whole event where people that want to be the next bearer of the sword go and try to wield the sword. Um, and most of the time, a vast majority of the time, the sword will reject them and not pick them, in which case it will make them kill themselves. So it'll like take control of their body and stab them. Um, well, not always kill, but maim, depending on how much it, it hates them. It may kill them. It may just r horrifically hurt them. Um, but this guy, Ashok, has, has got one of these swords now. And if... If the owner does something that is not in accordance with the law or dishonorable, the sword will shatter. And so over time, less and less of these swords have come about. And now the demons are supposedly kind of picking up on this and they're starting to come out. They're like, hey, there's not enough of these swords to keep us at bay. Let's kind of wreak some havoc again. That's kind of the setup for this story. I um, mean, I love I love the world building here. It's just it's wonderful. Um, but I'm still in the story. I'm not going to world building yet. So. In the story, you've got this character who is you, – you find out real quick that he is uh, – actually, I can't, I can't spoil anything. I want to spoil things so badly. Um, but I will say in some broad strokes, um, this is a story about a lot of different things. But in part, it's about this clash of caste. C-A-S-T-E. Um, can't say it perfectly. I've got a little bit of a lisp. Um, but the, the you've got these lower – end of the uh, of the caste system. And they aren't even considered people. They're just property. 
and above them it kind of builds up from there. And you've got the obvious sort of theme here that the cops are very stupid and that these people are very clearly people. You've got this rebellion going on between these lower castes and the upper castes, which is unthinkable for the other people. And you've got this guy, Ashok, that's kind of stuck in the middle of these worlds and trying to figure out, you know, what to do. Um, the book is constantly, um, not constantly, but fairly frequently jumping and telling the modern day story, but then going back and telling a little bit of the backstory about why this came to be. It's used in perfect times. Um, right when you're kind of asking yourself the question of like, oh, well, how did he become the bearer of this? Um, why is this the way it is? The next chapter will go back and tell that story. Um, and it's fascinating. I love that writing style. So a lot of times I, I hate these backstories, but it's used so perfectly here and it's giving you the right amount of info at the right time. Uh, this is a multi POV told story. You've got um, I don't even know how many different point of views because some of them are rather small, but I want to say eight or so, but three or four main point of views that are going on here, um, following different groups of people that are kind of connecting and unconnecting on multiple sides of this conflict. Um, and there's more than two sides, really, because there's some people that are kind of stuck in the middle of it or just a, a tertiary piece of this. It's a wonderful story. The, the story is just... Um, it takes you in some amazing directions that you don't really expect it to go. It raises the stakes when you're feeling like it's not going to raise them. Uh, it keeps the tension going um, in a thoroughly enjoyable place. And it's taking the story to those epic proportions that you kind of hoped it would at the beginning, but didn't, didn't think it would, but it's going there and then some. So the story is just magnificent. The world building, which is one of my favorite aspects to a good fantasy story, is just immaculate. I love everything about the way this world has been constructed. Um, I love the, the rich history going on in this world that makes you just feel like you're living it and breathing it. Um, it, it it's come alive. And in a relatively shorter book, I mean, I, I don't want to look at how many pages because this thing will not be the accurate amount of pages. It'll be a modified version based on how big my text is. Um, but it's not a huge book, but it feels like I got multiple books in here worth of content in a, uh, in a, I don't know, 500 pages or so. Okay. It's not that big. Um, but it just kind of takes a pretty blistering pace, but you just feel like there's so much growth in these characters that went along the way. It's just crazy how little words there are for how much we actually got out of the story. Um, the, the fantasy elements are among the best that I've read. I mean, it just, you, you read a story about demons and magical swords and you feel like I've read this before. I've read, a, I've read a hundred stories that use these common themes, but it pulls it in these different ways that just make it fascinating. I mean, th this idea of this sword picking its owner and the trial that it has to go through to get it, it's just wonderful. There's these twists and turns that I can't describe, you know, nothing like, you know, a Sanderson-esque end of the book, everything gets flipped on its head, but there's these little things that are weaved in through the story where it's just a perfect little twist to things where you're like kind of jaw dropped, like, oh, snap, that makes sense. I'm getting this story now. It's all becoming more clear. It's not a mystery story, but everything starts to fill in at the perfect pace. It's not too complicated. You don't have to like take notes or anything. I happen to do that because I'm a little obsessive, but you certainly don't need to. Uh, but it's complex enough to keep your interest. So just absolutely top, top tier fantasy elements here. And then it, it starts throwing in these other magical aspects to it. You're like, man, I didn't even think the story was going to go in that direction at all. Thank God it did. Um, and it's just, it's wonderful. Um, the characters. I, I, I love these characters. I, I can't pick out a single one that I can have a fault with. Now, certainly I have character faults with them in the sense of I hate some of them. Uh, but it's evoking the emotions that it wants to me uh, to feel. There are some people here that are clearly straight up evil. But you have others that have, you know, bad intentions, but they're trying to do the right thing, which I love, you know, it's got that first law kind of feel to it. And in, in, in a sense, I mean, this is a darker story. I, I don't know that I'd classify it as grim dark because I have every confidence in the world that the story is going to end off in a positive way. Um, but it has a lot of gray in it, a lot of gray. Um, but certainly some 
classic good and classic evil, but a lot in between. Um, but I love the growth these characters go through. I love the way that these characters are, are intermingling. I love um, how you think you know a character and you learn more of their story and then you get this totally different depth to them that stays true to what we've known about them thus far. It's really well done. Um, the pros here. The, I, I feel like the pros is the weakest part of the story, although not bad. Um, it just feels like it's standard fantasy fare. Um, certainly no complaints. Um, but it stands out to me as not world class like I feel like the rest of the book is. Um, so ultimately, as I'm finishing up this book, I have a few different thoughts. One is... I can't believe that this book is not more popular than it is. I, there's a portion of people that would just absolutely flip out on reading this and how good it is and, and how enrapturing this entire story is. Um, I, I cannot, cannot wait to keep reading this thing. I mean, it's jumping to the top of my list in terms of series that I want to read the next book in. Um, I mean, I can only think of one or two series that I'm actively reading that I'm a little more excited to read the next book than this one. I mean, it's, and I'm reading a ton of series and I'm including series that I'm, you know, caught up in and they just have to release the next book. Um, and, you know, so who do I recommend this book to? You know, I, I feel like if you like things like, uh, it's a standard answer, but something like the first law, this feels rather reminiscent, but a little more good and evil than uh than the first law not a ton though um but it's got that gritty world to it um that feels a little darker you know there's a lot of brutality here there's a lot of um unjustness in the world that um that characters can do nothing about and they just have to try to roll with with the punches uh but i feel like a lot of people that like the first law will probably love this um and but you just got to like a little bit of a darker story because this isn't going to make you have all these nice, giddy, fun feelings in your body. It's going to bring you down a little bit, but that's a good thing sometimes, right? Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching this review. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier and Librarian tier patrons, Anna G, CJ, Doust, Darren, Gregory, Jonathan, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Orthodoxia, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Sydney Baker, Tay C, Tahir, Anna, Andra, Blair, Brock, Evan, Fanixan, Harry B, Joe, Cat Mick, Michael Sugarman, Philippe, Sky, TW57, Wacky, and Zion. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video, and if you want to watch some more content from my channel, click over here and I've got some good videos for you. Thanks so much.